Hello my loves, I'm so excited to share with you this book today. It's called A Picture Book of Eleanor Roosevelt by David A. Adler, illustrated by Robert Casilla. And I love this book because Eleanor Roosevelt happens to be one of my own personal heroes and role models. She was an incredible woman all within her own right. She championed human rights across the world and made a difference for her basically her entire life. And I think she's amazing. She was also married to one of my favorite presidents, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And so she was the first lady and you can even go visit their house and and his museum and library in Hyde Park, which is just about an hour south of us. I highly recommend it if you have not already been there because it's absolutely amazing and full of incredible history. So this is a picture book all about Eleanor Roosevelt. I hope you enjoy it. And fun fact, her first name is actually Anna. So I basically think we're connected. Eleanor Roosevelt was born in New York City on October 11th, 1884. Um, and we're only 100 years apart. Her parents, Anna and Elliot, were wealthy. They had many servants, a home in the city, and a large summer home in the country. Eleanor's mother was beautiful, but Eleanor was not a pretty child. She was tall and awkward and also very quiet. She often looked so serious that her mother called her Granny. Eleanor hated that nickname. I would, too. Eleanor's father called her his Little Golden Hair and his Little Nell. Eleanor loved those names, and she loved her father. When Eleanor was just eight years old, her mother died. Eleanor went to live in her grandmother's house. Two years later, in 1894, Eleanor's father died too. Eleanor missed him terribly and dreamed of him often. There were many rules in her grandmother's house. Eleanor could not read in bed before breakfast. She had to wear long black stockings and high button shoes even in the summer. Eleanor was cared for by a servant, Madeline, who often screamed at her. Sometimes she even pulled Eleanor's hair. Hmm. Woof. When Eleanor was 15, she was sent to Allenswood, a boarding school in England. She was happy to go. She felt she was starting a new life. The teachers and students at Allenswood thought Eleanor was wonderful. The headmistress wrote home that Eleanor had a pure heart. She taught Eleanor the importance of helping others. While Eleanor was in England, her uncle, Theodore Roosevelt, became the president of the United States. He was strong and a popular leader. Eleanor returned to New York in 1902. She was almost 18 years old. Eleanor's grandmother sent her from one fancy party to the next. Eleanor usually hated those parties, but she did have a good time when she talked with her distant cousin, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Eleanor joined the Junior League and became a lifelong devote and began a lifelong devotion to helping the poor. While working for the Junior League, Eleanor taught children to dance and exercise in the Rivington Settle Street Settlement House. Franklin, Eleanor took her cousin Franklin to the settlement house. Franklin took her to college football games at his school. They fell in love. On March 17th, 1905, Eleanor and Franklin were married. At the wedding, the guests paid little attention to the bride and groom. They were more interested in Eleanor's uncle, President Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt was also an awesome president. Eleanor and Franklin had six children, one daughter and five sons. One son died when he was still an infant. Eleanor had servants and nurses to help her. At times, the children were afraid of the strict nurses, and so was Eleanor. Franklin's mother, Sarah, we're not going to like her, FYI. Sarah often told Franklin and Eleanor what to do. Sarah chose their first home and furniture. During the early years of her marriage, Eleanor didn't complain, but later she refused to be bossed around. In fact, side note, pause the story, Eleanor has her own home about a mile away from Franklin's home in Hyde Park, and you can go and visit it too. I've also been there, and it's so cool. It's beautiful. I wish I could live there now. But back to the story. Eleanor admired, for, uh, Franklin admired Eleanor's uncle Theodore and wanted to be just like him. Eleanor helped Franklin campaign for public office. In 1921, Franklin was strickling with polio. He couldn't walk after that. When Franklin first became sick, Eleanor was his nurse. Later, she went to political meetings and traveled for him. She brought back detailed reports on what she heard and saw. Franklin was elected governor of New York in 1928 and 1930 and president of the United States in 1932. He was re-elected president in 1936, 1940, and 1944. When Franklin became president, Eleanor became the first lady. The 1930s was the time of the Great Depression. Banks and factories closed. Millions of people had lost their jobs. Hungry people stood in long lines for free bread and soup. It was a difficult time to be president or first lady. Eleanor didn't wait to do things. Her motto was, tomorrow is now. She had a radio program, wrote a daily newspaper column, traveled to cities, towns, farms, and into coal mines. She brought hope to millions of people. Eleanor used the money she earned from her speeches and writings to help the poor. 
Eleanor spoke out for women's rights, the rights of Indians, the homeless, young people, and minorities. She told people, do what you feel in your heart to be right. Eleanor always did. Eleanor belonged to the Daughters of the American Revolution. In 1939, they would not allow a great singer, Marian Anderson, to perform in their hall because she was black. Eleanor quit the group and arranged for Marian Anderson to sing in front of the Lincoln Memorial instead. On December 7th, 1941, the United States Armed Forces were attacked at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The United States entered the Second World War. During the war, Eleanor traveled all over the world to visit American soldiers. When she came home, she brought messages from the soldiers to their families. On April 12th, 1945, President Franklin Roosevelt died. The whole country mourned with Eleanor. He was a most amazing president, and after him, they changed the rule because he was president for four terms, so after that, they changed it just to two. Eleanor moved out of the White House. She was no longer the First Lady, but she did not retire from public life. Life was meant to be lived, she said. The war ended a few months later, and Eleanor worked to ensure peace. She was the United States representative at the United, new United Nations, where leaders from all over the world could meet and discuss their differences. Eleanor said, if we are to live together, we have to talk. While Eleanor was at the United Nations, she was the chairperson of the, of the Commission on Human Rights. Eleanor was always busy. You must do the thing you think you cannot do, she said. Eleanor Roosevelt died on November 7, 1962. She was the most important, most loved woman of her time. President Harry S. Truman called her, quote, the first lady of the world. They had little Scotties. One of them was named Fala. So some important dates, right? She was born in 1884. She was, she got married to Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1905 on St. Patrick's Day. From 1945 to 1953, Eleanor served as a delegate to the United Nations. And from 1946 to 1951, she served as chairperson of the United Nations Human Rights Commission. She died in 1962 at the age of 78, but continues to be an amazing role model for all of us. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I did. Love you. Bye.